Hi everybody, Tom from the Corona team here. If you wondered how to get started using Cryptomet from uh, Chaos Corona, I'm going to give you two examples today, one using Photoshop and one using Resolve. Cryptomet can be quite useful, but there's a little bit more involved than other masks. So the procedures for using it are a little bit tricky and may require some extra thought. Now, I have um, already rendered this in Cinema 4D. I have two cryptomets set up, one by layer, I've named it CMAT layer, and one by name, I have named it CMAT name. Um, each will be easier to use in different circumstances. And here you can see that with the layer, I have um, top sheet on the bed selected in that layer, and I have uh, this uh, photo frame selected too. Now I've overdone the depth of field quite deliberately here because depth of field and motion blur is when Cryptomet comes in handy, when things have got blurry edges, not short edges. So uh, as I say, I have already rendered this. So let's go and save to CXR. Uh, now that it's saved, just a quick note, um, you can actually see a visual guide to the cryptomets in um, the VFB, but these are not the, the mets itself. Unlike another layer, you don't use these to select by color later on. You can see they have rough edges rather than properly anti-aliased smooth edges. So this is not the cryptomet. This is just a quick uh, human readable uh, interpretation of the cryptomet. And another thing I want to note, because I'm doing post-processing, uh, I want a linear output, so I have actually turned off all tone mapping, have deleted it, and just left simple exposure, which in this case I have left set to zero. So I'm going to pop over into File Explorer, and although you must save to CXR, before I can use it in Photoshop or Resolve, I'm going to have to rename it to a .exr. Easily enough done. Now I'll be starting with a look of how to do this in Photoshop, so I just double click the file and I'll pause here for a moment so you can see the AXR IO options. It's a free plugin, you must have it. Um, do note that Cryptomat raw data should be unchecked. Uh, then we're going to wait for the file to load. This will take a while uh, because there are a lot of layers in here. Uh, because uh, we have the by name option, basically for every object, uh, that has a unique name, we're going to have a unique layer in Photoshop. So uh, let's take a look at the layers. We can see them here. And uh, we're actually not interested in the RGB, uh, we're not interested in the alpha, and we're not interested in the weights. We do want the denoised RGB, however. That's the equivalent of our beauty pass. So you can see we have a vast number of layers here, one for each named object in the scene. Uh, but to work in Photoshop, we made our life a little bit simpler. We created uh, another cryptomat that was done by layer. So I actually can just go ahead and delete all uh, these other layers until we're left with just the denoise RGB and the uh, one um, cryptomat layer mask that I created. I only created one layer called post uh, with both the objects I want to work with in it. Uh, and that's what I end up with in my Photoshop. Okay, let's just hide the beauty layer, select the mask layer, and then I'm going to control A for select all and control C for copy. Now I've grabbed a copy of that mask. Let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. Um, I'm going to use a hue saturation just so we can play around with some colors and you'll see it comes in with a mask and it's empty so what i need to do is alt and left click to go in to edit the mask and then i can use Control v to paste my previously copied cryptomat mask in there and then i can alt click to return back to a normal view in the window rather than looking at the mask uh, let's just clear the uh, selection and now if I drag in the uh, Q saturation panel for my other monitor, we can uh, go ahead and make some changes. And we'll see that only those masked objects are affected. 
and uh, we can go ahead just the hue um, so basically you can do whatever you like with it and of course you can use the mask in any way you'd use any mask in Photoshop you could duplicate the beauty and use the mask to make edits um, on that duplicate only uh, only affecting the uh, masked objects and so on now let's pop on over to DaVinci Resolve and uh, I'm going to drag in our EXR and I'm going to drag it onto the timeline then I am going to head into edit mode right click open in fusion page and here's the standard layout for fusion you have a media in connected to a media out uh, in this case I need to uh, actually delete the media in and we are going to replace it with a loader so let's add tool IO loader and now I choose my uh, cryptomat again and uh, that's us ready to get started setting up what we need in Resolve now for the next steps you will need the free reactor plugin installed We'll put links in the description below that will show you where to find it and a video showing you how to install and use it. So I'm not going to cover that here. And the first thing we'll be using from Reactor is a tool. Uh, you'll find it under script and it's HOS Split EXR Ultra. Now you can see the recommended settings and we can use uh, run and close. And once run, it splits out the EXR into all the various components. And we are looking for the denoised RGB. Um, that's this one here called the denoised. I'm just going to check it by using um, the one and the two keys. I'm going to put that up in both display areas. And yep, that looks like the one. So let's move that to one side and then we can safely delete the rest. Now you can see it's too dark, and in case you haven't watched the um, a video regarding creating a light mix animation from one frame, what you need to do is add uh, a color, the gamut, and we need to change that to be input space sRGB. And now you can see it looked the same as we had in our beauty in the VFB. With that done, I'm going to go back to our EXR, select it, and I press Control space to search for tools and search for cryptomat and then i'm going to add that in let's press the two key uh, and just pop that uh, into the second window on display so you can see here when the mode is set to colors we can actually see uh, the mask and because this is the cmat layer there are only two uh, areas we've actually got the alpha showing up but we can ignore that uh, in this example so we can see the two uh, objects that we selected in one layer and then everything else is another color. But we can also change the layer index. And now we're looking at the CMAT name, uh, which is the cryptomat done by name. Now, while in Photoshop, it was very hard to work with the name uh, output because there were so many layers, it's actually pretty easy here in Resolve. What we do is we can move this little widget to point at any particular object in our mask and we click add. Uh, you can see it turns bright yellow to say that that has been added to the mask. We can then move the widget to point somewhere else and click add. Now we can see we've added um, the two objects we want to work with into the mask, but we could of course add more. Um, and because you're not walking with a long list of uh, tediously named layers, it's very easy to add, remove, and uh, otherwise edit the uh, name output to get what you want. Uh, and here we are, I've actually duplicated the same thing now in the layer and in the name. Um, I can just demonstrate that you can remove and add masks, it's very easy and very convenient. So next step, we're still not done, that's right. Uh, select the cryptomat and then control space and search for bool for channel booleans. 
and add that and then switch its operation to add. I'm going to reselect the cryptomat for a moment and I'm going to change the mode from color to matte. This actually lets you see what the genuine matte is rather than the visible interpretation of it. Uh, and with that done, let's select the channel booleans and press 2 to put that on our second display and make sure it looks the same. With that set up, I can now use the channel booleans output um, like I would any other mask in Resolve. So let's pop back to our gamut and uh, we are going to add a color correct onto that. So insert tool, color, color corrector. And um, I have just noticed I accidentally deleted the media out while I was uh, deleting the uh, various EXR layers. So let's put the media out back in. And what I want to do is hook up the output from the color corrector onto the media out. We'll press 2 to display it. And now I can connect the channel booleans as a mask into the color corrector. And let's go ahead and make some adjustments. And we can see that those adjustments are only affecting the uh, objects selected by the cryptomat mask. We are done. We have it working. Now, of course, you can do anything else with this, just as you would with any other mask. Just a reminder that this, this is all live. You can change it anytime you like. Um, so let's go ahead and select the cryptomat. And let's change it back to colors. And let's put it on show. Press 1, we'll put it on show in the uh, first panel. And I can go ahead and add other objects in, uh, or remove objects. And they will become part of the mask into the color correct. So um, very flexible, very powerful. As I say, does take a little bit of setting up. And if I zoom in here, you can see, I'll remind you again when you'd want to use uh, cryptomet. You can see here we've got depth of field. It's exaggeratedly strong. And that gives us these fuzzy edges. And a regular mask will not respect those. Um, only the cryptomet lets you work with these kind of fuzzy blurry images, whether that's from depth of field or from motion blur. So that's the kind of situation you'll want to think about. Hmm, maybe I should use cryptomat. If you don't have depth of field, you don't have motion blur, um, then a regular mask will probably do just fine. You can set up a regular object ID asks uh, and use those. But cryptomat, when you have that kind of uh, fuzziness introduced to the object, uh, that's where Cryptomat will be a lifesaver. I hope you've found this useful. I hope it's made sense, even though it's fairly complicated. And we'll see you in the next one.